Hi Divers, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Today's kind of interesting because I'm going to show you some stuff that you simply won't see anywhere else. Sorry, you just won't see anywhere else. It's just not available anywhere else, uh, I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but just, so let's do it. Now I'm talking about Vintage Scuba. And when people think about Vintage Scuba, they, they could think of about many, many things. I have a, trust me, Kevin will tell you, a garage full of Vintage Scuba stuff. Uh, and we're going to get to that over the next uh, year, four and twelve, uh, as I tell you more about it. But a lot of people think about regulators. And of course, when they think about vintage regulators, you generally speaking think about two hose, or commonly called double hose regulators. We call them two hose regulators. Uh, double, same thing. Anyway, they think about the old regulators with the big old corrugated hoses like this, you know, Mike Nelson style, you know. <laughs> Bubbles, and you know, it's really neat stuff. Well, uh, there's a couple of interesting things that I want to share with you on today, today's uh, double hose problems. And this is one of the problems with the double hose regulator. Okay, this is a hose from a double hose regulator, a very old one. This particular hose is from the 50s. Now, let me see, help me here, Kevin. I used to teach math, but the 50s had to be like, that would be like what? Uh, that would be like 65, 70 years ago, wouldn't it? Be close to it, 55, 65 years ago. So this hose is 65 years old and it still is in great shape. Rubber from the old days didn't last very long, particularly this rubber because it's dyed blue. They had blue and green and yellow, gray and black, normally black. The black hose has lasted pretty well, but the colored hose is not so well. You know, it was old rubber. But this one is in near perfect condition. I've had it for a very, very long time, and it's been kept in a sealed a Ziploc bag all that time. So what's so unique about this double hose? Well, what's unique about this double hose or two hose is it is not a double hose or two hose. It's all one piece. There's no double hose here. It's only one hose. So this is a one hose double hose. Or is it a double, a double uh, whatever. It's only one, and this is where they used to be. The very first regulators that were made, and starting in the mid 40s, late 40s, 50s, early 50s, the regulator was this two hose typical regulator mounted on the tank behind your bag, and then a hose came around over your right side from the air inlet, from, from the air feed, if you like, came around the right hand side and sucked in air, and then when you exhaled, the air went out over this other hose over your left side and bubbled up behind your head. That's the way they work. That's the way they still work today, double hose regulators. And there, there are lots of them in use today. A lot of them are reconditioned or, or, um, or improved, upgraded, old double hose regulators. Some are new. There's a brand new regulator produced by a friend of mine in Florida uh, that you'll be hearing about because we're going to do a video on We're going to do some testing on it and a video called the Kraken. Fantastic, brand new, modern uh, double hose regulator. And we're going to have one up here shortly to test and talk about it. But... In the old days, they were just like that. Hose from the intake, you sucked in and out it went. There was a problem. There were many, many little issues with double hose regulators. They weren't just as fantastic as people might lead you to believe. You sometimes you're going, oh, my double hose regulator was great. Well, it was when it was the only thing available. It was great, but not anymore. But there was a problem with this particular early style, and it has to do with this hose. It's a one-piece hose. You can see right through it, you see? What was the problem? Well, the problem is this. If you took the hose out of your mouth, you see, it was filled with water. That's not good. Because when you put a bag into your mouth to start to breathe, the hose is full of water. If you suck in, it's called drowning. <laughs> because there's a lot of water in there. I bet you there's a liter in there. Would there be? It's an inch and a half, you know, 36 inches. There's a liter of water. You had to swallow a liter of water <laughs> before you get air. Now you might try, you say, well, you blow out. You blow out and all the air will go through this and out through the exhaust. It can't go that way because there's a, there's a, a valve on this side in the regulator that only lets air in, doesn't let air out. So all the water on this side would go out through the exhaust and you're all set to go. You suck in. Oh, hold on a minute. This side's full of water too. Now what do you do? Exactly. You're gonna, now you only have a half a liter. That's okay, right? No. So this was a problem. It would fill with water and you couldn't get the water out. It had no way of stopping water from filling it up. Now, fortunately, in the 50s, a couple of guys by the name of, I was going to say Bob Hope, but it's not Bob Hope. Sam's going to be that mad at me. Sam told me the names. He knew them both personally. Anyway, two gentlemen. Their last name was Hope, and the other gentleman's last name was Page. Charles Page, I think. I'm just guessing here. They came up with a great idea. They came up with a device that you could put into the mouthpiece. And it looked like this. 
black mouthpiece to go in your mouth. It's like that. But you see this black thing here? And this black thing, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna, I took this hose off. This black thing actually comes apart. It opens up. <clears throat> Let me just unscrew this quickly. And you can see, what, whoops. And on the inside, on each side, there's one here and one over here. This opens up. To, on the inside, there's a little flapper valve. Can you see that, Kevin? I'm gonna see if I can hold that still. I'll fold this up so you can see. I won't bend it too much. It's a little bit brittle. Can you see that? Little flapper valve, you see? So that flapper valve sits right in there. Let me know which one have I got here now. That's exactly how it goes. Sits just like that. There's another flapper valve over in this side. And then and then after you cut your hose and you fit it back in there, like that. Now what you have is a two-hose regulator. <clears throat> I'll put this hose back on here carefully. This regulator is very old. 1954. Do the math. 1954. This is an old plastic-bodied dive air. Came in three versions. Plastic, aluminum, and bronze. I have all three of them. Or I had all three of them. I've sold a few. Old, old double hose regulator. Anyway, this sits on the back, as you know. And then this goes into your mouth. Now, with this Hope Page mouthpiece, okay, you would suck, and you get air coming in here like this, and we want to pass this one-way valve, press, pass the flapper valve into your mouth. Into your mouth. Now, the flapper valve over on this side would not let water come in. She could only suck air. You couldn't suck water back. So you suck air in, comes into here, right? Now, when you exhale, what happens? You blow in into it. Now that flapper valve closes. So it doesn't push anything into this hose. But this flapper valve opens and lets the air that you exhale come out and bubble up behind your head. It's that simple. Now if you take this out of your mouth, what happens? Well, nothing. This mouthpiece right here, this little black tube gets a bit of water in it. But it's the same as your single hose regulators today. They get water in the second stage. But water, there's a flapper valve here and a one-way valve here, and the water doesn't go up the hoses. So when you take it out of your mouth, you go to put it back in, a little blow, and that bit of water that's in there goes out through the exhaust. None goes up the intake. It goes out through the exhaust, bubbles up, and you start breathing right away. It's almost exactly the same, almost works as well and as good as a single hose reg today. There's no purge button on these as we have on our single hose regulators. You know, today, you can push the purge button and a blast of air clears the water up. Here, you had to have air in your lungs. And blow and out it would go. There are other ways to clear which I'll deal with some other time. But this was a tremendous improvement, just a great improvement. And the Hope Page mouthpiece, even though it wasn't cheap, these were $7.99. And there were guys, some guys worked all day in the 50s and earned five, six, seven bucks, so a day's wages. But it was so good after a period of time to pretty much every regulator, every diver that had an old fashioned regulator with this one piece double hose in it, had bought a Hope Page, had cut this off as per the instructions, cut it off, put on the Hope Page mouthpiece in the middle, and now they had a non-return mouthpiece. That's kind of interesting because that's how the non-return mouthpiece came about. It's also how all these single double hoses disappeared. Very, very hard to find a, a good, a certain one in good working order like this. Very hard to find one of these old original 1950s one-piece hoses from a two-hose regulator. Very hard. And that's why, because everybody modified them. They were great. Now, a little later, a large company by the name of uh, Healthways, a very common company. Maybe you can zoom in on here. and uh, yeah, Maybe you can. Their regulator had a very unique name. Their two-hose regulator was called Scuba. <laughs> it was a brand new word. It only just been made up of just literally months before self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, scuba. And it wasn't copyrighted or anything, so Healthways, they had some double hose regs. They had regulars at the time, and they, we'll call it scuba. Ah, what a neat idea. And they made several, actually. But they also approached uh, 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 Hope and Page, and they bought the rights to the Hope Page mouthpiece. So this one here, on this one, actually says Healthways, Hope, Page non-return valve right on it printed right on there and it's exactly the same you can unscrew this that's the same thing inside here little flapper valve on each side you can see that it's it's just changed the shape a little bit they improved it very slightly so there's not the the big black thing now it's now it's a big gray thing uh, but it was much easier to change the valves in there and and uh, and so this became common on all Healthways regulars, they had the patent on it at the time, so nobody could copy the Hope Page mouthpiece. But shortly after that, other companies caught on because all divers wanted that now. 
so they all caught on. And so later, almost all regulators had their own version. So here's another regulator from the, from the 60s, a few years later. Uh, this is actually a, a Sportsways water lung, and it was sold by a company called New England Divers. This was a dive store, and they were able to get this regulator and put their own label on it and sell it. But the important thing for this discussion is that it had a non-return mouthpiece. You see? There it is. Can I get that out of there? Maybe not. Don't think so. But it has a non-return valve. So all regulars after that came with that non-return valve. Mouthpiece looked like this. So there's one side, and there's the other side. You can see right through the mouthpiece. But when you put these non-return valves in, put the hoses on, and clamp them, and away you go scuba diving. It sure made scuba diving a lot easier, certainly if you're using a two-hose regulator. By the time the 60s came along, single hoses were starting to come out, but not too many. So there's a bit of history on that non-return valve. The old hose, which you won't be able to see anywhere else, the old one-piece hose, and how it came about the Hope page. Now, I only wanted to add one more thing. I mentioned about the Kraken we're going to be testing, and uh, we have an upgraded two-hose regular as well, so we're telling you all of that, how you can upgrade your old two-hose regular, service it, make it work like new, and then upgrade it so that you can put on other accessories like your BC and your Safe Second and your, your SPG, all that kind of stuff, which two-hose regulars don't normally allow. And about the Kraken, the brand new, modern, manufactured, not an old regulator upgraded, but brand new, manufactured, reg two-hose regulator, beautiful. Currently being used all over the world. A very good friend of mine just came back from a week of diving in Truck Lagoon on the Japanese shipwrecks using nothing but its Kraken. The only other thing I wanted to add is, <clears throat> before I say goodbye, a couple of you, somebody anyway, mentioned about the stuff on the wall behind me here. Uh, the, how do they call it? The junk on my mantle. <laughs> I'm a collector. Always have been. That's why I've sort of ended up with this stuff because scuba's been my life and motorcycles and so many other things. But I do. I see something that's really interesting and really neat. My wife says I love toys. Okay, I married her. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have a lot of neat stuff up here and I thought I'd maybe pick something off the wall. Here's, here's, this, here's a silly little thing here, right here, Kevin. This is kind of interesting. Can you, can you zoom in there? Can you see that? Some of you might recognize this. If you're 50 years or older, you might recognize this. If anybody knows what this is, you say, I know what that is. The rest of you are saying, what the hell is that? This is called a spile, S-P-I-L-E, a spile. And you can see it's a, it's, a, it's a little trough with a tube. On the bottom of the tube, there's a hole on the bottom of the tube. And there's a little wire hook hanging down here. Well, what the heck is that for? Well, it's really very simple. What you would do uh, this time of year, actually, February or March, is you would go out into the woods and find maple trees, and you would bore a hole, about a three-quarter inch hole, into the tree. You would put this spile and tap it into the tree. And then as the sap, which is coming up in the springtime, up the tree, up from the roots, would come up. It would go into that hole and drip out the spout. And you would hang a bucket on there to catch that sap to make into maple syrup. So that's what that is. This is a neat little thing. Why do I have that in my mantle? Because it's not a big deal. Well, I have this in my mantle because you know that we heat by fire. We heat by fire. We heat with firewood. We burn wood to create fire to get heat the house. And, and we, we put a lot of woods in, into the fireplace over the wintertime. And good sized chunks of wood. I found this in the ash pan. Right. At some point over the winter, I put a hunk of hard maple into the fireplace. Hard maple is great, lasts all night long. And in the morning, the wood was all burned and the spile was left behind. The spile had been left in a maple tree many, many years ago. And the tree had actually grown around it. I didn't see it. I would have taken it out because I wouldn't want to hurt my chainsaw on this. But there's a spile that I found in a piece of maple. So you've learned what spiles are and the kind of interesting story how I found it. And there you go. There's one thing from my mantle. We'll share some more later. i got to go now. Time's up. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Hope you enjoyed that. And we'll talk to you real soon.